Welcome back and welcome to Merseyside. Built on an illustrious heritage that stretches back 800 years, Liverpool has a global reputation for sport, music, architecture and a wealth of culture. Today, the city is enjoying a resurgence driven by its designation as the European Capital of Culture in 2008. With more museums, theatres, galleries and listed buildings than in any other region outside London, Liverpool's cultural wealth has long been a major attraction. Liverpool is also the world capital of pop music. And thanks to one group of young men from the city who decided to form a group in 1960, the home of the River Mersey was placed firmly on the musical map. As a result, over the years, artists of Liverpool origin have produced more number one singles than any other. None more popular than that group of four young men, the Beatles. During the 1960s, the quartet found itself at the forefront of the beat music movement, which would eventually lead to the British invasion. Liverpool is also rich in architectural heritage, and it is home to many buildings regarded as amongst the greatest examples of their respective styles in the world. Several areas of the city centre were granted World Heritage Site status by UNESCO in 2004. Steeped in history, Kia is also one of the world's most famous sporting rivalries with two top-flight English football clubs going head-to-head -head each EPL season. It is the longest currently running top-flight derby in England, having been played at that level every season since 1962-63. For 40-plus years, the Merseyside derby between Liverpool FC and their rivals, Everton FC, has long been a happening that divides a city. Here, you're either from the red side of the Mersey or from the blue side. For South African midfielder, Steven Pinar, a move to the blue side was an inevitable step in his career. Yeah, it was a surprise uh, after the pre-season, we had a few days off and I went to Amsterdam and I got a call that uh, they asked me if I wanted to join Everton. And I thought first it was a joke because you know, I just came from preseason and there was nothing about me moving anywhere. So and then uh, I got a second call and then I said, OK, if if it's concrete, I'll I'll join. I'll definitely want to play in the Premier League. And I think uh, with the year that I had in, in Germany was for me to build myself up and to get physical and to know what to expect from the Premier League. And when it came around, I grabbed it with both hands. Since Pinar arrived at Everton FC, he has become a firm favourite of the millions of the club's fans. He may be experiencing the dizzying heights of football success at the highest level, but the 31-year-old's journey began many miles away in South Africa's Soweto Township. Growing up in the south side of Johannesburg uh, wasn't the easiest, I'll say. Um, a lot of... Uh, gang-related gang stuff, uh, drugs, uh, poverty, and I grew up with a single single mom, so it was only me, my mom, and my siblings, so she was the only one working, so after school I had to take care of my sisters, and it wasn't easy, but uh, I often managed to sneak out of the house and have a kicker in the streets with my friends. The proud South African has been fortunate enough to witness a number of football first, both personally and as a member of the national side Bafana Bafana. Of course, to make my debut uh, before the World Cup 2002 and to be part of that team, it was, it was really something special. Because, um, to be honest, no one thought I'll, I'll make it into the team and I was also quite surprised, but not that surprised because I was doing well at Ajax, I won the league and the cup. And, I was the only player that wasn't, that never played in the, in, the, in the senior team, but I was, and then I got it selected, and that was something special. When a move to Europe arrived for the former Bafana Bafana captain, he followed his heart for a dream move to Holland's Erevidesi. Um, yeah, 
as a South African moving to a, a big club like Ajax was, was a dream come true for, for me. And how it came about, I was uh, at a school of uh, excellence in Johannesburg and they had a partnership with, with Ajax Amsterdam. Every year they sent two of the best players uh, over to have trials and that year I was quite, <laughs> I was playing really well and it wasn't easy because it was a school of, of 80 boys and only two have to go. So I was quite fortunate that I got chosen and when I went over I uh, did quite well and they recommended me to go to Ajax Cape Town because there was a few players uh, at a time in the youth team that was playing my position and it was you know, local players so they sent me they sent me to Cape Town and in a year I went back uh, I made my when I went to Cape Town I was 16 years and I made my debut for the first team and since then I kept on playing and I played really well and that's how it came about and the scouts came back and they had a look at me and they were quite impressed yeah it was a big change because when I joined it was in January and it was the coldest, the coldest month in, in Holland. So I wasn't used to to the snow and and of course uh, seeing people skiing in front of me on the water. It was just uh, something special. But yeah, playing uh, in, the, in the team with uh, Aaron Winter, Richard Wichka, Jari Liedman uh, was just a dream come true for, for me because I remember when they won the Champions League. Uh, in '95, when Mandela went over to go on the boat on, on the canals and everyone in South Africa, that was just something special and it was a dream come true to play with him. The former Bafana Bafana captain's progression through the game has certainly been calculated and his journey to English Premier League side Everton FC was one of immense strategy, gaining the attributes he needed along the way. The best parts of uh, my career was in Holland. I uh, spent six years there and I really enjoyed my time. The football is different uh, compared to England and Germany. It's, it's more tactical game, uh, discipline and yeah, a lot of passing going on, like the Dutch way of playing football. And of course, when I moved to Germany, I think it, it for me personally, it was a step up compared to the Dutch league. It was. Um, competition was much bigger and the football was more physical and also it was also a lot of tactical but a bit slower than uh, than the Dutch and and of course the Premier League is the tempo is just everyone knows it's just high it's end to end all the time and yeah, it's also physical and for me to to have the the, the Dutch way of football the early part of my career and to move to Germany to, to get a bit build myself up a bit to, to come to the Premiership. I think it was a, a good step uh, in my career. His days of pulling on the Bafana Bafana strip might be behind him now, but he is still a proud supporter of his country's national team. After all, his decision to hang up his international jersey was all for the right reasons. Well, it was a difficult uh, decision, but uh, surely I don't regret it because um, I had to put myself uh, in front of uh, everything in the past I didn't and this time I, I stood up for myself, for my, for my body, for my health and because I've been through a lot of uh, stuff, a lot of injuries in the past but playing a lot of games, traveling and when you reach the age of 30 you have to consider what's good for you and uh, I made a decision and I'm happy with it. Now, his focus is on the English Premier League and chasing for that ever-elusive top four spot. So, who will get the better of the Merseyside Derby in the English Premier League's 2013-2014 season? The Reds of Liverpool or the Toffees of Everton? If honorary Evertonian Stephen Pinar has anything to say about it, it will be the Toffees, of course. Well, for me, it was just to come back and to make sure I'm free in my head and enjoy myself, play with a smile on my face and don't worry what the people say around you, what they expect from you. It was just important to, to enjoy myself and work hard. And if you if you can do that to play with a smile on your face, you you always enjoy your game and 
automatically people will, will open up again to you and that's, that was just how it is and uh, I showed that maybe I was wrong to leave and I know some people uh, how they feel about the club and to leave to lose one play it was maybe sad on their side but to come back I had to make sure that I win them back over again and I had to show and prove myself again. But playing with the, with the, with the guys it wasn't difficult because um, uh, I only left for a year, it wasn't long, so <laughs> the feeling was still there. That's all the time we have this week. Thanks for watching and bye bye. This program has been brought to you by Airtel, proud supporter of Africa's rising football stars.